it's time for the part of the show where I book the guest and you ask the questions. This week, I had the pleasure of chatting to the broadcaster and ex-Liverpool legend, Jamie Redknapp. Jamie Redknapp! Oh! After a career that saw him play for England, as well as captain Liverpool and Tottenham, Jamie Redknapp has since gone on to become a beloved football pundit and a team captain on a league of their own. And now he brings us his new autobiography, Me, Family and the Making of a Footballer. Jamie, thanks so much for coming on the show. Pleasure. How are you, mate? Good to see you. Very well indeed. Now, you've got a new book out, Me, Family and the Making of a Footballer. And what I love at the beginning, I love the way that you talk about your relationship with a football. It really spoke to me because it's a bit like Harry Potter describing a wand. <laughs> and it's, but it's kind of, it is a magical thing, isn't it, when you're a kid and you yeah. suddenly realise, wow, where's this been all my life? Yeah, I know what Did you mean. You, I, I think I was so lucky. Obviously, I had a dad that used to bring, every now and again, a new football would appear. And it was like, wow, this is amazing. And I talk about, there's one part in the book where I talk about the book, the ball from America with it, I think it was the NASL. Yeah. And this ball was like, like you say, a magic wand. It was something so special. I, it is somewhere. My, even my dad's got it, or I've got it in my garage. I have to try and find it, Russell, because it was um, it was so beautiful. And because and, and you know, it's like as kids, and I'm sure you were the same. I know you're a big football fan, but you find that ball somewhere when you're a kid, and it's like normally all the panels are missing. There's no lever on it anymore. But this one was always the ball that you bought back indoors and looked after it and cleaned it. It was just yeah. yeah it was like a piece of. Um, yeah, stardust, if you like. It was so cool. Obviously, I'm a Liverpool fan, and now you're a fixture on TV. I feel like I know everything about you, but what I didn't know is that you've got OCD. Mm. Now, normally, when people talk about OCD, it's putting their, you know, cans in the right order, they're getting their shoes neat, or they're making sure they shut doors. The way that you discovered you had OCD is fucking mental. <laughs> like, to do, with your, to do with your feet, right? Um, yeah, weirdly, I, it was when there was a lady called Evelyn and she was, when we lived in the US, she became friends with my mum and dad and she came over to England, she's never been to England, she came over to stay. So in the living room, we used to sit down at night after, you know, having a bit of dinner and she used to sit there and start biting her toenails and I said, ooh, that's a bit weird. Anyway, because she was into her yoga and stuff like that, I thought, oh, this is quite interesting, I see how far I can get my leg into my mouth and then... I obviously then picked up this disgusting habit, but what I didn't realise at the time, Russell, was that it was something that's going to benefit me later, later in life, where I can, I'm pretty good at it now, actually, but I'm not far, I can normally used to be able to get my leg over my head, and, and when you play football, you're always looking to get your body into different you know, parts and contort your legs up, and you know, if the ball's up yeah. there, you want to be able to try and bring it down. So I looked at it as a positive, you know, biting your toenails, who would have thought that would help you be a professional footballer? Well, you know what, I was onto something, mate, before anyone else. But I just don't understand. How old were you when you saw her doing this? I was only about 25. <laughs> but, but it's that thing of... No, so I was about eight or nine, I guess. So can you still... Do you still do this? Do you still chew your toenails? I, I, do you know what? My knees are not as good as what they used to be. I can nearly get it. I can draw a little... Try, I'll see how far I can Yeah, let's it. see if you do it. Well, yeah, quite yeah. tight jeans on, though, mate. Quite tight jeans. But I can get sort of, like, quite high, but not <laughs> high enough, as you can wow. see. But that, I mean, if that does... you can see that there is the promise, you know what I mean? That would have yeah. to practice. It's, all, it's good, it feels right. I'll tell you, mate, if that doesn't make it onto a specialist website, nothing will. <laughs> but the idea, the idea of you trying to put your feet in... It's now, funny it's you say some... that. Some, I didn't, some guy on Instagram kept sending me these things about feet, and it was... It, my, uh, I must have been like my feet were the feet of the week, and they kept sending me pictures like they, where they had taken... Someone had taken a picture on, in Miami with my son on the beach, no top on or anything like that, but it wasn't that they were interested in, it was the feet. There is obviously people that do, you know, these fetishes out there, but... Um... Well, let's not muck around, you're a good looking lad, but I imagine your feet are rancid, rancid. because... Yeah. Well, no, I'd well, say, your foot... to be honest, mate, because I've manicured them over the years, been biting my nails, they're actually quite nice, you'll be surprised. Really? That no, surprises me, because footballers' like feet. But I was gonna say, like, normally, you know, you've, you've spent a lifetime smashing leather, that they're just, they're normally battered. So the idea that, that they're kind of looking at your feet, I find fascinating. Yeah. Now, it isn't just me. We've got a couple of questions from fans of yours. Now, the very first one, uh, apparently this guy's a huge fan. Jamie, my question for you is, what is your happiest memory from a league of their own? And I'll caveat that by saying it has to be a memory that involves me. Can't be from before I joined the show or after I left, right? No one's buying that anyway. I know that 
when I was on, you said those were the glory years. And when I said that I was leaving, you cried every night. So don't try and be like, oh, my happiest memories when me and Romish went go-karting and then wanked each other off. No one crying. <laughs> happiest memory from the glory days. Go. <laughs> Oh, well done. The glory days. Okay, we'll talk about the glory days. <laughs> um, I must admit, we had some brilliant times on the road trips. Swimming back from Alcatraz, that was a great moment. But do you know what? I'm so fortunate. And I know you've been on the show, and we've had some great comedians like Ramesh, John Bishop was on for many years. So, yeah, I, I wouldn't say they were the glory days. They were called the all right days. You know, it's more glory days now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, what's interesting about uh, A League of Their Own is that you used to be a massive fan of Question of Sport and you were obsessed with Ian Botham as a kid, is that right? It's true. When you were a kid, obviously, that was one of the, the main programmes on the BBC. And yeah. um, I didn't realise until I started to... I, was, I want to get on Question of Sport. It was one of those things. But you couldn't go on Question of Sport if you just merely played for Liverpool. The only way you could get on Question of Sport in those days were, were if you were an international footballer or cricketer or tennis player. Oh, is that right? So you had to play in this... Oh, OK. Right. had to play for your country. So as soon as I played for England against Colombia, one of the first things afterwards was, I can, now I can go on Question of Sport. It was quite Fuck, weird. that's like, hilarious. Yeah. Right, we've got another question for you, Jamie. This is from Facebook. Do you regret wearing those cream FA Cup suits? Do you regret that? I, of course, you re we, I regret it purely because we lost the game. <laughs> yeah, I exactly. I regret, well, the I regret the glasses as much as I do the suit. Controversially, I liked them. I remember that was... So I'm 15 years old, this. But I guess, when I look back, I think, wonder why nobody said, like, guys, I was 21. I wasn't in a position as a, as a yeah. young man to go, look, we're not wearing these white suits. I was just, like, doing what I was told. But it was just a stupid mistake. And, yeah, I look back, I don't... I, do you know what, though? That's life. We all make mistakes. It was a... You know, we, at the time, we thought we'd get a free Armani suit. This is brilliant. But it didn't quite work out the way it did. I'm not even sure. There's a rumour that, like, because Giorgio, it's Giorgio Armani. It wasn't even that well made. I think it was his brother, Freddie, or something. Because it was never <laughs> it was so badly made, mate, honestly. I've got another question here from Scott Williams, who says, why did you opt to go into TV and commentary and not football management? It's a really good question, actually, because I, 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 was, you know, I retired at 31, Russell, and it was a case of... It was quite difficult to take because uh, anybody that knows me will you know that football has always been my life. So when that all of a sudden gets taken away from you, I almost wanted a couple of years just to get my life in order and, and, and see what was going to be the next chapter. I was always, I always felt that I would go into management and my dad always, you know, that, he always says to me even now, you, know, you make a good manager, your knowledge of the game and how much you love the game, you, that's what you'd have to have. But I sort of got it, I came out of football, I got started working at Sky, loved the punditry work, and then Liga de Rome came along and other bits and pieces. And it's all of a sudden, time's just flashed by and I'm loving what I do. And I thought mm. to myself, if I go into management, you can have six months doing it, might work out, might not. Before you know it, you could be sacked. You know, I, there was part of me that I look at Frank Lampard, who's my cousin, I think, oh, I was at yesterday at the game, uh, the Chelsea game, and I think that buzz, you know, when your team wins or if, if you know if things go well and you or you made a tactical substitution or you bring on a you know a player and they perhaps don't do well how you deal with those situations i have that little bit of jealousy and i think i'd love to do that but as i say right now i've got so much going on in my life but i yeah. would never say never like I'm, I'm addicted to football yeah no totally man um we've got a question here from Tallulah who says would you ever do i'm a celebrity get me out of here no, uh, do you know what? I get up uh, to the last two years my agent has actually said to me look they've asked you to do it would you do it it's not something I fancy doing. You know, I do enjoy it. I love watching the programme. It's, you know, out, out of all the reality shows, it's the one that I like watching. I'm terrible. You know, like, even the, all the eating challenges, I'll be, and anyone who watches League of Their Own would soon realise I'm terrible at those sort of things. I'm, I, I can't yeah. hold anything down, Russ, so I'll be struggling. I mean, you'll eat your own toenail, but you won't eat... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> do you know what? No, I don't eat it, actually. Let, let's just, I, I should no. have clarified that for people <laughs> yeah. before they've switched off. So I remember talking to you when your dad went into the jungle. What, what was that like to watch your dad on a show like that? That must have been a real head fuck, just every night. Yeah, that's a great way to put it. I knew people would like him because he's not... He's very down to earth. He has a unique ability to make people feel special. Mm. And mm. he just smashed it. He was great. He just, he was himself. And I think the bit where mum came in and they had that moment in the, it yeah, was, it was so lovely. And, and it's real. It's, there's no side to my dad. He just, he, he adores my mum. Uh, you know, he knows how lucky he is to have her. And, and I think they're the perfect partnership to be honest, because 
she lets him do what he wants. You know, he's very, in a way, in the nicest possible way, he's quite selfish, my dad. If he wants to watch horse racing, he's watching horse racing. He won't turn around <laughs> to my mum and say, oh, do, you, what, do you know what, Sarge, do you want to watch someone else today? It's like, no, it's the 3.30 at Kempton, unlucky. <laughs> <laughs> in, terms of, in terms of writing the book, the way that you describe your mum and your nan, it's clearly very strong women in your life that played such a vital role in, in helping kind of mould you, in a sense. Do you know what I mean? Like, you were, yeah. your, your mum just seems like this, and your dad as well, but your mum seems to be this almost, almost like your dad's coach yeah. to, do you know what I mean? That kind of making sure everything was done. It's really, there's something really nice about the way you write about the women in your life. I really like that. Everyone always talks about my dad and how amazing he is and what a character, et cetera, et cetera. But my mum is the, she's the star of the show. I love the bit where you were saying she was she was doing everything and your dad does the stories. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that was really great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but he, she was such a character. She's my dad, su such a big character. But my mum is has that softness, you know. And I'm not afraid to say it. I mean, every day I speak to my mum, I check in, make sure she's okay. And it's always been the way. And I and I when I went to Liverpool as a 17, I missed I missed the dread uh, terribly. So it was a tough time. But you know, she's she's incredibly. You know, she's the kindness and the light that you need sometimes because my dad's a bit old school. You know, he wasn't the sort of person that would. You know, you can't imagine him getting the bird, birds and the bees conversation with Harry Redknapp, can you? Well, you wouldn't want it really. But you know, my mum was that person that you could just always have that conversation with and have that. You know, she was. If you have any worries about anything. Yeah. Right. We've got uh, we've got another video question here. Hi, Jamie. Ramesh here. Um, my question for you is, is ever since I've known you, or even before I've known you, I have known, as has everyone, that you are smoking hot. Like, ridiculous, blazing hot. Like, interplanetarily different species hot. The force is incredibly strong in you. I mean, I feel less attractive, and I'm not that attractive anyway, but I feel even less attractive when I'm in the same room as you, same building as you, mentioning the same conversation as you. So what I want to know is, how hot does Jamie Redknapp think he is? How hot do you think you are? How hot do you know you are? How hot are you, in your opinion? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> what do you say to that, mate? Oh, come on. I, I, still, I listen, I asked him, I said, have you got a question for Jamie? And that's what he sent me. Oh, done. I can't, I find that very difficult. You know what, as well, I, I'm not going to talk about me, but that's very kind <laughs> of you said that. Do you know what? I think Ramesh is looking great at the moment. Mate. You know, I'll say that. That's what I thought. I was like, holy shit, he looks well, all right, man. good. He's, you know, like got that yeah. fade coming on. He had to shave his beard off a couple of weeks ago and he wasn't happy, but no, that, I, how can I answer that? Come on, Russell, I don't, I've got no answer to that. The fact that, no. Um, right, final question actually is, is from my mum. Hi, Jamie, big fan. What's your guilty secret? <laughs> Well, there you go. Have you got a guilty secret, Jane? Your mum right now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I walked into that. I uh, walked the, naive, I the naivety. Well done. I mean, at the moment, I'm loving the crown. I've gone into the crown. That's my, that's my guilty pleasure at the moment. But is that a guilty pleasure? I think it's... That can be guilty. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it depends. Well, what, I love it, it depends I'm really you... into it. I'm only on series two, but that's... Because I, I, I mean, I, I like, the, I love the royal family, I'm, and I'm just, I keep like, thinking to myself, I wonder what the Queen, or I wonder if they've ever watched it. I, that's what I keep. Is, is any, have they ever been asked about what is, what is like Kate and William or, or the Queen? Have they ever talked about it? I wonder. I think they, they're furious with it, the, like generally because it's not the truth. So that their, their thing is like, oh, that, that it didn't happen like that. Whereas the makers of the Crown are like, well, it's creative license. So yeah. it would be a bit like them. Like, let's say there was a Netflix show called The Red Naps. Yeah. And then, and then you watched it, and then you're like, hang on, it never happened like that. Yeah. And then everyone's coming back going, fucking hell, you used to eat your toenails. And you're like, I didn't eat them, <laughs> I just clipped them. But it would be hilarious if the Queen said that at the Christmas speech this year, like, don't watch The Crown, it's all, it's all <laughs> bullshit. None of it's real. <laughs> but, but it is compelling, mate. Have you watched um, it? Oh, yeah, yeah. And my wife loves it. Like, so my... So she's way, but she's she's up to date. So I've only, I've only just got into it. So I'm probably like you. So I'm I'm halfway through the first series. I can watch it with your mum, Jamie. Please, <laughs> son of a bitch. Oh, that's a nice, um, um, no, no. Over Christmas. That's the doorbell. <laughs> <laughs> what you got there? What's coming here? Hold on. I mean, I would love that. If it would be great if if you've had like a really full-on sex doll delivered. <laughs> like that, if it's just the right <laughs> 
But yeah, yeah, exactly. Just comes in and it looks like my mum. What the fuck? <laughs> so thank you so much for coming on the show, bud. That was really great. It was great fun. And I know we've obviously gotten well over the, over the years because of Liverpool and everything like that. So thanks for having me on. It's been, I've, I've actually been a little bit so, annoyed it's taken this long to get me on. Well, that's it. You know, but we've saved the best till last. Jamie, thank you so much for coming on the show. Ladies and gentlemen, the wonderful Jamie Redner. Thank you, Russell. Thanks, mate. That was awesome.